everyone, Frank and Darren back again, the Slaughterland Movie Podcast, with the things you didn't know about the Halloween franchise. And today, as we're talking, almost a month, actually less than a month away from Halloween ends, we're talking about the fan favorite, Halloween <laughs> Resurrection. Actually, it wasn't going to be called the Resurrection, but let's go through the titles really quick. Homecoming, MichaelMyers.com, or H2K, Evil Never Dies. There was a few titles, weren't they? Mm. As always with these things. But um but yeah, Michael I mean Myers.com. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was in the early days of the internet. And, uh, you know, yeah. well, I say the early days. The internet was probably in terms of everybody using it like they do, was probably about three or four years into it. Yeah. And um yeah, they probably thought they were being smart by calling it michaelmyers.com but then they realized they didn't hold the rights to that domain so they couldn't use it someone else had it um but let's go back let's go back to um to, to, to h2o the end of h2o mm-hmm. um the reviews and the box office were, were really respectable you know around about 55 million domestic box office and you know some kind of it's not quite fresh on rotten tomatoes but there, there were some decent reviews for this um for this comeback for jamie lee curtis um, Mustafa Rakad had this policy that everybody talks about with you can kill the boogeyman, the boogeyman lives, he, he, he just he doesn't die, you have to carry on for other films. Um, and I so, uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> and so, Kevin William, Williamson, before they finished, um, Halloween H2O devised this kind of ludicrous sort of H2O plot. Of switching him, of switching Michael with the EMT, which we don't kind of find out until sort of after the films come out that that's mm-hmm. the case. Um, they, <laughs> it sort of explains Michael's odd behavior, I suppose, um, when he's trapped in between the um, uh, the cart, the, the van, and the and the tree. Yeah, where, why he's going. Oh. Uh, why didn't pull his mask off? I've no idea. Did he glue his mask on? And reach <laughs> out and say, Lori, one last time. Well, they crushed his larynx, didn't he? So he couldn't speak. Well, the reason why H2O, he didn't, he was supposed to reach out and say, Lori, as well. You know, if that yeah, happened, oh, yeah. Yeah. They that yeah. would have ruined everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, he, and he, it doesn't also explain that really kind of ropey Michael Myers setup that, that the AMT does. Mm. Because uh, it's very so. Well, he's trying to be Myers, isn't it? Uh, but but it doesn't really explain that away. So, um, yeah, in June of 1999, Akkad put a poll on HalloweenMovies.com asking fans if they wanted to see Michael return, and they've sort of vote, voted overwhelmingly for him to come back. Um, because Dimension, I think, were were keen on on having him go the anthology route again. Yeah. Um, which he really didn't want to because obviously they were burnt by Halloween 3. But um, yeah, so on August the 7th of 1999, it was announced that Halloween H2K, as you said earlier, Evil Never Dies, uh, was the working title for for the next film and would be released in October 2000. H2K for crying out loud. <laughs> Everybody was trying to jump on that, weren't they? I'm a big... Queensryche fan and they brought an album out called Q2K um, <laughs> remember everything you bought was Y2K compliant <laughs> what a bunch of suckers we were yeah, exactly we were all waiting for planes to drop out of the air and all this kind of stuff all oh, because the clock resets when it gets to midnight on the end of 1999 and it's like what it's like Armageddon was going to happen um, you know what happened in our house Fuck all. That's what happened in our house. Nothing. Everything People was got just drunk fine. Mine. <laughs> we were waiting for Australia to go off the map. Then we're like, leave the clocks. <laughs> yeah, they were the litmus great. test. Chris oh. Stanley and his and everybody yeah, were, were. If he, if if if, if uh, it turned out that the lights were going out and the kangaroos were having nothing but guns and Uzi shooting people up, <laughs> then we knew not to go to Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> all the cat gurus are going nuts um, yeah <laughs> shout out to cosplay chris shout out yeah hey chris <laughs> um so in, in may 2000 our card announces then that um halloween h2k evil never dies is stalled due to unspecified and i quote this is what he actually said illegal mumbo jumbo 
<laughs> they had nothing going on. They didn't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that was about. Um, and it was no longer scheduled for release. So it was kind of cancelled. No, I don't know. Maybe somebody who's watching this knows why Halloween H2K Evil Never Dies was um, was cancelled. I'm not sure. Um, it doesn't really explain it in the book. Um, but it does say that they got Robert Zapier back to, to have a go at the first script. So Michael was going to be on trial after uh, H2O, and then all the witnesses were going to come back and testify against him. Could you imagine that? The victims I'm coming boring. back on, on the stand. Can you point <laughs> out the man who did that? I don't know. He's wearing a mask. I don't, I don't know if it was the guy right there, if it was you. <laughs> Do we, can we put the mask back on the person just in case? Was he wearing this? You know, just like, <laughs> Michael's, you know, could you imagine seeing Michael lean over to his lawyer? <laughs> yeah, and then but apparently they were supposed to have some kind of um, he escapes. Um, something was going to happen throughout the, 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 the courtroom and, and the courthouse. And then uh, it was all going to be Laurie underneath a mask at one point. <laughs> I think that was the next script, wasn't it? Oh, this shit. This <laughs> it was one thing. of the other scripts. In this one, I mean, who would they have? Who would they have brought back in this? I mean, everybody killed everyone, pretty much. So you would have uh, Jamie Lloyd, but she's supposedly she's dead. Yeah, uh, this is just Laura uh, Bracket, maybe. Yeah, maybe Bracket would come back. Um, dun, dun, nurse Marion. No, Nurse Marion died. Dun, 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 dun. I can see the, <laughs> the people's court coming in. Every witness. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Walkers. Judy. Yeah, walkers are coming in. I think, could you imagine the judge, you know, they, they put Michael up on the stand to answer. You know, the, the witness will answer, please. I'm just staring. Uh, Is he your honor, my, 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 my client reserves his uh, Fifth Amendment rights to not incriminate himself by not speaking. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, it sounds messy, doesn't it? It yeah, sounds messy. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then the next. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the, so, what would have what would have happened in that is that Michael breaks into the um, uh, into the evidence vault, takes his own mask and knife and suit, puts it all back on, and because everybody's whole you know housed up in this courthouse or whatever, he goes on a rampage in there. Um, and the first couple of people that he kills are John Tate and Kerry Tate. Mm -hmm. And that means that Jamie Lee Curtis has then fulfilled her obligations contractually. Um, With a gap. The, it, yeah, yeah. It's interesting that, that her she was contracted to appear for only 30 seconds. She, in wanted, Halloween she wanted out of this. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. She was, she was, she'd had enough completely. Yeah. Um, and then another pitch was by Todd Farmer, who wrote Jason X. Mm -hmm. um, this was the one that you alluded to briefly um, a few minutes ago, which was having Tommy Doyle and Lindsay Wallace trying to understand <laughs> what Michael went through at Smith's Grove for 15 years. Um, only... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. These all sound very serious, don't they? Um, <laughs> only to discover that Michael had survived the events of H2O. Uh, and the twist here is that the killings start happening again. And then when they catch up with Michael, they unmask him. And it's actually a crazed Laurie Strode. Um, so that would have been her few minutes appearance at the end of the film. But it was kind of quickly rejected. So... Uh, we weren't, you know, subjected to that in any shape or form. Seeing uh, Michael dance in the corner. Are we sure that's Michael? <laughs> it, it gave it away when she walked into the room singing, I wish I had you all. <laughs> Use the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, but never mind. She could have, never mind. She could, she could, no, yeah. No, 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 let's not get into that. Let's she not get can use that. any room she wants. <laughs> <laughs> well, they finally settled on uh, Larry Brandt, who was a big fan of Bob Weinstein, apparently. You know, he, he has some few choice words about it. Uh, but this was his major breakthrough. This was his boatload of money, as he says in the book. Uh, and he was he knew something about script writing in the film business because he was Orson Welles' driver. And it's uh, pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, could you? And he was getting notes from him. Could you imagine Stanley Kubrick? You know, you, you were the person who brought him his tea, 
and he just gave you some pointers <laughs> and you just watched him. Um, so I don't know, being the driver for Orson Welles gives you some kind of credibility or makes you an expert, but I'm sure that they had some kind of talks over movies with, with over lunch, a lot yeah. of lunch. So he decided to uh, pitch a, a movie to Mustafa Akkad, and Mustafa Akkad liked what was going on. And we, lo and behold, this wasn't his movie. Halloween Resurrection was uh, probably about, what, 10% of what he writ, wrote? Yeah, yeah. This was called HalloweenMichaelMyers.com, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and, 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 and it's kind of the basic outline of what Halloween Resurrection is, I guess, to an extent, with a... A, um, a live webcast from inside the the Michael Myers house, from inside the a live webcast from inside the the Myers house. Because mm -hmm. um, it was but, the rage back then. Everything was the rage. It was Blair Witch. It was uh, uh, the real life. Uh, it was Survivor. Everything was getting on with this streaming. Um, yeah. Um, thing that reality was stuff. Yeah. 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 Which, on the surface of it, you know, when I first heard about that. Um, during production, I was a bit like, "That's maybe not a bad idea." It was off the back of Blair Witch, but mm -hmm. I think things started to get too much like Blair Witch in a way with this, uh, and so they started to kind of drift away from what his original idea was. Yeah, um, I'm, it's not too detailed about what what he had in mind, but there were a number of rewrites done on the on on Larry Brown's script, and so we ended up with. Um, as I said, they didn't have the rights for michaelmyers.com, so um, they changed it to Halloween the Homecoming. And that was the first I heard about Halloween Resurrection, was this title Halloween the Homecoming. And then that kind of went out the window because they wanted to kind of reassure fans that Michael Myers was actually coming back. And so eventually they announced it was called Halloween Resurrection. Which, you know, is kind of an 80s, sounds like an 80s video title or something like that, doesn't it? A lot of um, hours, but yep. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fine, it's fine. There was also a period where they, were before they signed Rick Rosenthal, they, they were teasing the fact that Dwight Little might return, which could have been interesting because he had his I head like screwed on. That. Yeah, yeah. I liked his style. He had his head screwed on when he was making Halloween 4. He knew what, what how to make a Halloween film. Um, but he's seen the movies, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, eventually, that, that didn't happen for whatever reason. I think he'd gone on to a few bigger and better things by then, a, a Dwight yeah. Little. Um, and in the end, they settled with Rick Rosenthal. Thoughts on Rick Rosenthal directing this, Frank? Well, we all know that he partially directed H, you know, Halloween <laughs> 2. Um, <laughs> Let's, let's be honest. Ouch. John Carpenter was there on set. Just mm. like how Steven Spielberg was there for Toby Hooper for Poltergeist. <laughs> he just came in and popped in. So how's everything going? You know, he was there. Uh, we I was excited when I first heard about him coming on to do this movie uh, directed by Rick Rosenthal. I was like, oh, my God, we may be getting something like Halloween 2 from 1981. That would be fantastic. Mm. No. No. <laughs> it could have been, again... Uh, uh, Larry Brandt said it was uh, not Rick's uh, fault uh, what happened to this movie. It all comes down to Bob fucking Weinstein. Interfering again. Meddling oh, again. Oh. Oh. There's, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of things to say about in this book that I'm tapping, ladies and gentlemen, taking shape. Um, a lot of people... Which is right here. Right there. For those yep. of you that don't know, all this information is coming from taking shape. Um, available on Amazon and all good bookstores. We, we must plug it, given that we're using material to create these podcasts. And and the, the writers have done a fantastic job. Dustin McNeil and, Ta and Travis Mullins. Um, they've also got Taking Shape 2 out as well, which we will get to at some stage. But uh, everything at the moment is coming from the original Taking Shape book, which goes all the way yep. up to the 2018, Halloween 2018. So it's it's pretty detailed. A terrific, uh, terrific read and a lot of work done into it. Um uh, so, yeah, I was uh, I was I was happy uh, when he came back to re uh, to reiterate. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, what do you think? You know, H two is probably one of your favorite uh, mm. movies. Yeah, I, no, no, I was I was I was I was excited, but in the back of my head, like you, I knew that they had to pull on Carpenter to 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 finish off um, Halloween two because it just wasn't working at the time. Yeah. 
Um, so I was a little kind of apprehensive, but Rosenthal's kind of part of that whole kind of Halloween universe clique. Um, he's married to Nancy Stevens. Yeah, so I was kind of like, okay, well, maybe now the guy, he's got he's got TV credits under his belt now. He's kind of still been working over the years. Maybe he'll do something with this. And so they did eventually convince Jamie Lee Curtis to come back um, to fulfill her contract. But she decided that 30 seconds wasn't enough and that she wanted to put Laurie to bed for once and once and for all. Mm -hmm. um, and so she ended up doing four days of shooting, which we all know was set inside that psychiatric ward. And, but initially, and this is weird, I don't know if you read this bit, Frank, I found this, this incredibly weird, this bit. Initially, Jamie Lee Curtis wanted all the patients to have creepy, kind of elaborate Marilyn Monroe hair yes. and makeup, which was the result of a local beauty parlor using the patients as guinea pigs. Um... They said no straight away. So like, can you imagine all these kind of... More like, rouge. Yeah. <laughs> Bring in Harold. We're going to try big passion on him. <laughs> Who's the guy that's kind of mimicking Gacy in this film? Harold. Is it Gacy? Harold, was that him? Yeah. yeah. Instead of the instead of the, mo instead of the clown mask, maybe he just had this kind of big quaff blonde hair and red lipstick on instead. Um, he said, yeah, and he goes, a kill me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a weird i don't know where she was with that i've no idea but um and then in, initially there were ideas of her committing suicide and throwing herself off the off the off the roof of the the psychiatric ward where the kind of showdown happens yep. um she tried to get michael to jump off with her and there was all sorts of weird kind of stuff that they were trying grab out. him and throw him over with her yeah 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 and, and also saying to him you'll never get john you'll i made sure yeah. that you know you, she put him in witness protection she has that much power <laughs> as a headmistress of some kind of boarding school <laughs> out in the middle of napa valley <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it it there was just some bizarre stuff. And Laura, you uh, have a good way of hiding your children, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> they they also wanted to um rather than her come back at the beginning to to be killed, there was also another idea which they had which was and it's what would have worked better for me, I think, which was to have her appear in the last act and save the kids in the house. Yeah, um, but she was adamant that she wanted to be killed off, and so well, that's the route that, that they went. She could have done that, killed herself off too, couldn't she? She could, yeah, done I that. guess so. Sacrificed herself to save yeah, the running kids. there with a with a with a vest bomb. Get out of here! You know, just run <laughs> a in. Vest bomb. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine? Get out of here! Happy Halloween, <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But they, 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 and this is the, what, what really stunned me about this. So filming was due to end in July 2001. Yes. Okay. And they had a re, they had a hard release date of September 21, uh, 2001. So literally only a matter of eight weeks between finishing completion, uh, completing the movie and releasing it. Yeah. Now that's that's not out of the question. But they decided to test it. A number of times in all places, in a, of all places that they used, <laughs> it was your mob. It was New Jersey. You, you and your friends have bloody Buster Rhymes to. <laughs> <laughs> they love. We love Buster Rhymes. We went up there and we said, on, on our test screening scores, we went up there and said, we need more Freddy. <laughs> Didn't we? We said, ladies and gentlemen, you can blame New Jersey for this movie. <laughs> Test screenings throughout New Jersey weren't that great oh. at all. But the people were saying that the ending didn't make sense, which I guess it didn't. Um, and that people wanted more Buster Rhymes. So, <sighs> and which they they allowed uh, Buster Rhymes to re to write his own dialogue. <laughs> So he everything had some great dialogue. He yeah, had lived it all. Okay, you know if you want to think that. Uh, so <laughs> I want to know if he came up with the trick or treat motherfucker, or was that in the script? No, he had lived that. Of course, you he sure. Did. <laughs> yeah, and the Chris, Chris, chicken fried crispy motherfucker, or whatever oh, it is he good. says later on. <laughs> Killer shock. <laughs> yeah, in baggy ass overalls. You know, um, they, they lo we love our Buster Rhymes. We love them. <laughs> 
Well, he was popular at that time, too. He was really popular. He came out with an album. Um, so they thought, you know... Uh, I don't even know if I know one Buster Rhymes song. What did he sing? Oh. Uh, fire it up. Fire it up. They had the beginning of... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I have some Buster Rhymes CDs. I, broke, I haven't broken them out in a, in a while. Uh, fire it up, I think, has the beginning to uh, the Knight Rider theme in, in, the, uh, in the song. The oh, I think I know that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fire it up. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, Dick, you go ahead, Darren. <laughs> yeah, no, we're gonna do lay lay down some one. lyrics for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so they, they had to then re reschedule the release date. They had to go mm -hmm. in, up in t 2002, uh, and they scheduled four days of reshoots um, in November and December of 2001. Um there was, there were, I think there was something like three endings to this film, all very yeah, similar all, but different. They're all on the DVDs and the Blu-rays. Yeah, they're all yeah. there. Um, they all don't make sense either. Um, no, because the continuity's out in all of them. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, how did Decker all of a sudden show up and save Sarah? Uh, mm. You know, we don't know how far away he is from the party watch, the watch party. I mean, did he yeah. run there? Did he get on his bike? I think he's uh, he's still in high school and she's in college. Um. Uh, but I don't know if he's a senior or not, but who cares? Uh, whatever. Good for you. Good for you, Decker. <laughs> um, so the morgue is the ending we got, wasn't it? With Where his yeah. eyes open at the end. But then there was the other ending, which I'm sure most people have seen, whereas he's been brought out of the house after the fire on the gurney. He's all burnt. Um, his eyes open and he grabs Buster Rhymes by the throat, who's got some kind of bandages on him hasn't he that that weren't there before or something yeah. i can't remember what there's, there's a there's a huge continuity error there um but yeah he grabs buster ryan's by the throat uh and then sarah turns around and grabs one of the fireman's axes and plunges it into his head now i liked that ending i thought but it was obviously too finite for old uh was this before uh, the, or after he switched clothes with buster rhymes Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, he well he wasn't really supposed to survive this movie anyway. Well, no, I mean like, but then Mustafa Akkad sticks his nose in, and he ends up, you know, he'd probably end up living. Well, he did. He did live in the end, didn't he? Because he opened yeah. his eyes in the morgue. Um, yeah. Would, I mean, well, I want to talk about one really quick. Um, would you have loved to see Jim beat Buster Rhymes with a bat, thinking he's Michael Myers? Which one was Jim? Jim was the guy the uh, with the leather jacket and the big hair. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of the guy oh, looks like uh, Casey Affleck. Right. You have to remind me of characters' names in this in this particular film. Because... I had to remind myself, Darren. You know, I, I, <laughs> I barely look... watched this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was supposed to beat Freddy, Buster Rhymes to death with the baseball bat, and then take the mask off and saw it with... And, seen it was freddie he was supposed to you know they weren't going to have time to um, um think about what they've done and mourn freddie because uh michael just came up behind them uh grabbed jim took the end of the baseball bat and shoved it in his mouth all the way through his head yes yeah yeah <laughs> that Jeez. i would like to see that would have been an awesome kill but with these three endings um rick rosenthal I don't know. I don't know whether he couldn't choose or whether he couldn't make his mind up or what, but he wanted to release the, the three separate endings in theaters. So depending on which cinema you went to, you would get potentially a different ending. Oh, Christ. Um, isn't that what a lot of people are saying about Halloween ends? At the moment? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, they did this before with another movie. Um, I forgot which one. It was in the book, but it wasn't a movie I didn't recognize. Um, oh, it yeah, was Clue. I, Clue. 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 Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. They did, but it worked. It worked with Clue. It works with that. It works with that, of course. Well, not with this one. I mean, this is a slasher <laughs> movie. It's not a whodunit. We know who did it. Yeah, and it's max of desperation to me, does that, you know, like, we know it's not that great, so let's let's put different endings out there and maybe people will go and try and find them out. Um, but... Could you imagine the Who money knows? wasted if somebody said, I'm going to go down to my local AMC and I'm going to see that. Then he saw the uh, original ending and then he went down to uh, uh, for over here. You know, we have something called bow tie cinemas, a uh, little mom and pop stuff. Um, and he goes, 
No, I just saw the damn same fucking ending. And he's going to each <laughs> damn theater. And it's like, oh, oh, where do you want to see the alternate ending? And they show a list. And the closest one he got is for me would be out in Pennsylvania. I'm like, what the hell? I have to drive out there to watch four minutes of an ending? That would have been, I think, a logistics. And uh, and for Universal, that would be a nightmare, a backlash. A it would, backlash. But I also think, I don't think that they would have told you where these were playing. And back then, the the, you know, there wasn't social media like there is now so you people wouldn't be tweeting oh i got this ending in this cinema and then people could go to that cinema it would be a nightmare like you said you'd be just buying tickets all over the place looking (laughs) it's like you know those things that you get at fates and things where you have like half an egg in the sand it'd be like picking those up just to (laughs) sounds ludicrous doesn't it like and which one do you go with which ending do you go with it's you have to sit through the whole damn movie (laughs) <laughs> to see that ending yeah oh my god no, no. no but just wait for the dvd about, yeah yeah let's wait for it we did and then we're just like i'm glad i didn't they didn't do this so i waste my money on this shit <laughs> um let's talk about some of the stuff that was going to be in the movie or was deleted from the movie mm. um the sex <laughs> let's get this out of the way the sex so we do know there's nudity in it yeah. Um, so Rick Rosenthal had to turn down the nudity. So when he test screened it for Mustafa Akkad, he slipped in, no pun intended, a scene from Caligula. Really? And Mustafa Akkad fell off his chair. <laughs> he said, don't turn down the sex. You know, we don't need that much sex. And all of a sudden, we see penetration from a 70s movie, Caligula. Oh, really? I didn't read this bit. I must have yeah, missed this bit. It was in there. It was in there. You know, <laughs> could you imagine Mustafa Akkad seeing penetration? Oh. Well, we all this, know Mustafa Akkad. This is not the boogeyman. This is not the boogeyman. I don't no, know what the boogeyman is going to do. Yeah. You're going to give me some kind of triple X porno movie. You know, <laughs> it's, 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 not really. it's, it's full of dirty, 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 dirty stuff. This is Halloween <laughs> erection. I don't like this. <laughs> And then you also have, you know, stuff like that. I mean, you know, that, I think that was put in as a joke, of course, just to tell Mustafa Probably. Khan, you know, calm down, calm down. Mm. But then let's talk about something interesting. What's the two constants that we had throughout the whole series? We had Lori and we mm. had uh, Dr. Loomis. Lo- Loomis, yeah. They were going to bring in somebody different. Detective Jeb Donaldson was going to make an appearance. We were going to Donaldson. Be- Yes, we were going to have a little little play there for uh, mm. you know, Donald Pleasance and honoring him. We were going to have a new character that we were going to gravitate to in this movie. Who's going to play him? Oh, I don't know. They never put that in there in the book. Okay. Um, but they were going to have him come in uh, not believing that Michael was dead. That's how everything was going to start. You know, Michael... Uh, was not dead. They were going to show him up. Uh, he was going to do investigating. He was going to find Michael. Um, he was going to die eventually. But they said, why have him in if you're going to, you know, if he's going to be killed off, if you want him to be attached to this series. Um, there was also going to be, the, the original idea for this guy was that he was going to, Michael was gone. But then at the end of the movie, he was going to see all different Michaels surrounding him. Oh, wow. And then take a slash in the movie we're supposed to cut. Kind of like H4, I'm assuming, uh, when they see all different types of Michaels. But yeah, I would have loved to see this the you know, this detective uh Jeb Donaldson. What a name. <laughs> Jeb. <laughs> Jeb Donaldson. Yeah, I I'd heard about this character before. I'd always I'd always known about the um Donaldson character. Mm-hmm. It's about time we get some sort of you know, with if they relaunch Halloween again, like I always think that they've missed a trick with not having a Loomis type figure throughout this recent trilogy. I know we started with Sartain, and we all know how that ended. But then how it you feel? Been, <laughs> yeah. It would have been the, good, the dirty bastard. Well, he, he, did I? <laughs> yeah, because he put on the mask and everything. You called him a dirty oh, bastard. And yeah, he yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Sinking the film, bloody hell. Um, so, but I always felt like there should have been a a kind of Loomis type character 
so what would they be attached to yeah yeah a real a, a decent kind of you know uh, whether it was male or female i don't care but a really strong kind of protagonist that's there to kind of you know that's from that side of 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 the uh, you know that, that's in the medical side of things psychiatric side of things that's picking up the work that loomis left mm-hmm. and it's kind of i know that you know the sartain thing is supposed to be that but it wasn't because it was just a stupid misjudged plot line that, that 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 got rid of him i would have been quite happy for for sartain i've said this before to stay throughout the whole um three movies I liked that character until he kind of got all dirty and put that mask on. Um, so yeah, so I, I always think it's been a missed Let opportunity Michael, to unconscious. <laughs> yeah, um, I always, you know, it's 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 it always feels like a missed opportunity f- yeah. for me. And and it's not like we're trying to replace Donald Pleasance. It's kind of honouring his role. Um, that's how I would look at it. And you know, we just we just we've never really had it. Oh, I think about it with this one really quick, ladies and gentlemen, with this trilogy, the uh, with the the Blum trilogy, is that we have only two people to uh, gravitate to, and that's Laurie and Allison. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can't we can't gravitate and hold on to Sheriff Barker. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the guy is absolutely nuts and incompetent at his job. I mean, you can tell he's he's just walking around staring like how he's gonna you know fix all this. And then when he went up the stairs and everyone's piling through him, takes off his cowboy hat like he's riding a bucking bronco, and it's like <laughs> ah, you know, and his hat's crushed and everything. He's just a, he's just defeated. He's a defeated man. Um, yeah. And hopefully in this movie he just comes up. Well, you can gravitate to Hawkins, can't you? Hawkins, I think you can grab it. Yeah, too. you can. It, but he was pretty much incapacitated in the last film. So it'll be interesting to see how, you know, what his involvement is in Halloween. Anyway, we're, we're straying here. We're talking about Halloween Resurrection. We're, <laughs> we're going forgettable. off. Of, it is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I want just want to say about the original ending that Larry had. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. And the original ending was that um, the place was going to burn down. The Myers house was going to burn mm. down. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, wait for this. This is going to be the ending and ends. I swear to God, this is what's going to happen. Now that they're taking everything from every damn script that was out there prior to this, uh, prior to Halloween ends and, and stealing it and putting it in shit, this is the ending that's going to happen. Mark my words. Probably not, but I'd be very surprised <laughs> if it's not. Michael Myers is going to sit up at a burning uh, of the Myers house out of ashes, sit up, stand up, He's all charred, and he's just going to disintegrate into ash. That was the original <laughs> ending for Halloween Resurrection. Really? What, like yes. the click, the snap? Yeah. In the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, you're right. You're right. <laughs> that, that's that's the, what Larry, the Larry Brand in his interview said that was going to happen. He wanted to have Lori was going to be dead. Michael was going to be dead, but, you know, as the firemen are, are, are uh, swifting through the ashes and, and going through them for evidence, you know, you see this figure sit up. It was Michael. He stands up and is all charred and everything still alive. And then all of a sudden, poof, ash. This is what's going to happen in this damn movie and end. <laughs> you reckon <laughs> you're going to put your, should we have a bet on that? <laughs> Could you, what would happen if it did? What would happen? What would you say to that, Darren? Ladies and gentlemen, what well, would I'd you say? I'd be stand? 10 books down. <laughs> if you want to know what's going to come up in the next Halloween movie, get taken shape because there's loads of stuff they deleted that they're going to say, we don't know what to do. What kind of scripts do you have? And they're going to steal <laughs> stuff from the scripts. We know this. It's, we know it's, this. Been, it's been going that way throughout the franchise, though, hasn't it? They've been rehashing old ideas throughout this whole damn franchise. Even through, you know, some of Rob Zombie stuff, we realized that there, there were ideas that were going to be used in earlier fr- Halloween films. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't surprise me what happens in Halloween Ends. You know, so far we've got, we've got, uh, with what we know about Halloween Ends, is kind of a disregarded plot for Halloween H two O. It'll be interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, Darren, do you have fond memories? I've seen this. This was released out there in the theater, right? Well, I I didn't think it was. Um, Apparently, when we did our Halloween Resurrection Best and Worst of episode, which you can watch if you click that link right there now, um, 
I, at the time, I thought it didn't come out in the cinemas over here, but I was corrected in the um, comments below by people that did manage to see it in the cinemas over here. It was very, very limited, and um, it wasn't long before it was on VHS. I think I saw it on VHS. I don't think you'd think I bothered to go to the cinema to see it. I'd heard such bad things. Man, so, your, your feeling was that it was just, oh, it was no, nothing. Just, I, I felt like it was unwatchable. Apart from the fact that at the time it made me feel quite ill because of the, the 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 camera movement and everything mm. in there. Yeah, I was I was the same. Um, I was just happy there was a Halloween. I know some of these uh, some of the people out there like Resurrection, and that's absolutely fine. Throughout our whole series and throughout this whole channel, whatever you like, you like, and no one can change that, and no one's going to criticize you for it. Well, criticize might be something uh, you know you may get now and then, but hey. To, to each your own you know this is this is your stuff you know yeah you know there's some stuff that i like you know that darren thinks is is, is piss you know and there's something <laughs> that darren likes i think is uh, is awful you know um dawn of the dead uh, so we'll uh, i think it goes down in history as probably the as a consensus as a poll the worst halloween movie in the franchise being very tied with uh halloween 2 rob zombie yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, if you may be a fan of this, it, then, and that's totally cool. If you are a fan, if you do really like this movie, pop it in the comments below. We do like to hear from people who have differing opinions, of the, you know, to us. So, yeah, let us know in the comments below if you are a fan of this, because I don't ever recall many people saying that they liked it. Um, but I'm sure that there are people out there who gravitate towards this, because it'll be the first Halloween film they ever saw. So it'd yeah. um, be good to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Darren, less than a month away, aren't we? We are. We're less than a month away. It's 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 great. Um, you know, there's been a lot of kind of images and TV spots that have come out over the last week or so. Um, I don't know how I feel about them. I'm just going to reserve judgment until I get to see it. Um, I think personally I would have used some better lighting and, and poses and things like that. It just, this, the, the images that I'm seeing at the moment make it look like Michael's a, a bloody real estate guy showing you around a house so uh, i don't know i don't know we'll we'll see but uh, at the moment i'm kind of a little bit indifferent about it yeah that's the end of resurrection we're coming back still we still got uh rob zombie stuff to do um and we got h18 to do and uh then we're getting it all worked up and for h3 more... let's not forget oh, h3 yes we, yes we want to really we'll do 40th anniversary in October so we really want to kind of celebrate that so we're holding off on that episode until mm -hmm. until October to be able to really kind of talk about that and I don't know maybe we'll do a watch along who knows of what three <laughs> I don't think I can do that again <laughs> we'll see we'll, we'll see. see on that note ladies and gentlemen as always stick to the roads and the best of luck we'll see you next time take care bye bye